This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. I remember one time I had a conversation with a teenaged gang member who was an habitual user of heroin. And I vividly recall a remark he made in defense of his addiction. He said, don't knock it if you haven't tried it. Of course, any position whatever could be defended with that line of logic. You could advocate anything from gargling Drano to shaving with a blowtorch with the earnest protestation. Wait a minute, don't criticize it if you haven't tried it yourself. And yet, paradoxically, perhaps... This is the precise argument I am now going to offer in favor of living the spiritual life. To anyone listening to this radio broadcast who is sincerely skeptical about the power of prayer, about the exhilaration of worship, the satisfactions of serving others, or the invigorating joy of living as a son or daughter of the living God by faith, may I earnestly respond, don't attack it until you've tried it. Because once you have tried it, you're going to discover that it's real for yourself. But it must be by your free choice. No enforcing angel of compulsive religiosity is going to come down to earth and get a step over toe hold on you, a hammerlock and a half Nelson, pin you down and make you believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Make you believe that you are infinitely loved by God. You must choose these things by simple faith. And for the purposes, not of your own, but the purposes of God. I once read in a history book that J. Edgar Hoover, during the last years he headed the FBI in Washington, D.C., said, and I quote, The spectacle of a nation praying is more awe-inspiring than the explosion of an atomic bomb. The force of prayer is greater than any possible combination of man-controlled powers, because prayer is man's greatest means of tapping the infinite resources of God. End of quote. Prayer is not a technique of coercing, cajoling, or pressuring God into doing what you want God to do for you. It is exactly the opposite of that. It isn't God obediently carrying out all of your desires and whims and wishes for your life. It is rather you cheerfully and willingly desiring to carry out God's purposes. The former is magic, the latter is religion. For Jesus taught the power of prayer is to be used to do the will of God. He taught to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. To pray, God, it is my will that yours be done. And happy is the person who prays for that. To synchronize your life, your mind, your thinking, your actions with the mind and will of God, ever striving for goodness of thought, goodness of word, and goodness of deed. Physical effects come from physical causes. You must, for example, take a physical hand saw to cut through a physical wood plank with the physical labor of your physical arm. But equally truly, Spiritual effects, love, peace, joy, harmony, must come from spiritual causes or antecedents. Prayer, meditation, worship, faith. What goes on in your inner life? The inner life in which you can find and know and experience the truth and the love of God. There are many moments during the day when you can consciously, deliberately engage in prayer, meditation, and worship the spiritual life and seek for this guiding will of God and practice the presence of God. There's the period just after arising in the morning, perhaps getting up earlier would assist in that. Or you might schedule a break or over your noon hour, a time for seeking strength and direction from God, either before or after supper can be a good time too, depending on what feels best for you. Another favorite personal prayer and worship time for many is just before retiring. But the best way to know When to pray is to pray about it. Ask God. Share every aspect of your inner life with God, every question you have with God. In any case, make it a regular thing. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Daily. And spiritual nourishment should likewise be daily, not weekly, not monthly or yearly, as some sort of annual observance of your faith in God, but a part of your ongoing moment-to-moment life. 
sharing your life with God. The interesting thing about it is that often when a person prays for strength, God gives that person exercise. And the person simply doesn't recognize the answer because God works in wondrous ways. You pray for strength. God gives you exercise, but only because it is exercise which ultimately builds strength when it is accompanied by nourishment. There is a nourishment in the spiritual life of prayer, meditation, and worship. Or you may pray for more love for people, and God may send you more people to love. The point I'm making is that oftentimes the answer to prayer comes not in thunderbolts from heaven, but from situations on earth, situations containing the very answers which you are seeking if you will only seek to recognize them. God strengthens people not only in the peace of the prayer closet, but in the milling of the marketplace as well. If humankind would find the strength of God by seeking it, by questing it, seek and you will find, said Jesus, knock and the door will be opened. In one of my earlier writings, I compared prayer to having a chat with a next-door neighbor. But it's really even better than that. It's like having a chat with a member of your very own family, your father and your friend. And you are unique, and so will be your personal spiritual experience. No two people have precisely the same religion. They can have the same God, but your religion is personal, and your relationship to God is personal. And in that sense, there are as many religions in the world as there are people in this world. Recently, a young woman said to me that she found it hard to pray for herself because that seemed selfish, to pray prayers asking for things for herself. She said, if God already knows what I need, and if God already knows what they need, the other people need, then why pray about these things at all? The answer to me is that prayer is not a means of getting God to give. It is a means of getting people to receive. Prayer is give and take. God has already given. All you have to do is receive. Prayer is unclenching your fists. Your fists clenched in anger, fear, anxiety, selfishness, whatever. Unclenching them to accept and receive what God has for your life and receiving it in living faith. It isn't that God answers your prayer only when you pray. God is answering your prayer even before you think to pray. God is ministering to you and teaching you continually, inwardly and spiritually. It's just that you have to stop talking long enough to listen. God's answers, God's truths and beauties and goodnesses are there whether you pray and ask for them or not, but by praying for them, you are opening up your end of the circuits for the receiving of them. God wants to give you a good life. God is your father. You are God's spiritual child, a son or daughter of the deity, and God's pleasure, God's joy is to give good things to your life. You can know God, not the way you know a baseball player's batting average, but the way you know your friend. You can know God not the way you know a recipe, but personally. You can know God not the way you know a theorem in geometry or the multiplication tables, but the way you know someone you love on earth. It's an interpersonal interaction, sharing your life in prayer and worship. But prayer should not end at amen. It should go on to worship. Praise God. For every breath of air your nostrils breathe, for every throbbing of the heart within your breast, for every new pulse beat in your veins and at your wrist, thank God for every glass of cold water when you thirst, for every fork full of food when you hunger, for the quiet renewal of sound sleep after a hard day's work. Give glory to God for sunrise, noontime, and sunset, for nighttime sequined with sparkling stars, for rains and rivers, mountains and oceans plains and prairies. Thank God for friends and friendship, for love and loving, for every beauty, thrilling truth, and holy goodness. Praise God for a mind to think, for eyes to behold, for ears to hear, and for a soul to worship, to worship your living Father, the living God. Let every waking moment of your day be lived in glory to your Father. For this you were created, nothing less, nothing else, will satisfy your soul. 
the contemporary Western world is glutted with prosperity, reeling with affluence. Compared to the rest of the world, the major emphases of life still seem to be on materialism rather than on the transcendent values which alone can make life worthwhile. Yet underneath the diamonds and chrome, there is still an unsatisfied inner yearning for God, and until that longing for the Creator is recognized and dealt with, humankind can never be happy. We may be amused, but not happy, until we dare to discover that we are one family upon this planet, the family of God, brothers and sisters and children of God. Modern society has all manner of outer things of life, but very few of the inner things love and truth, beauty and goodness and purpose. We have wealth without wisdom, politics without principle, formalism without faith, power without perspective. And only when humankind gathers the collective courage to begin to seek first, above all other things, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, can lasting transformation be achieved. You can discover the truth of these spiritual principles in the inner sanctum of your own life in this moment by saying, God, here am I, send me, use me. It is my will that yours be done, and life for you from this moment forth will never again be the same. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.